Welcome back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you are new around here, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. We're just about 1950. Unbelievably, we may hit 2000 by the start of the season, which is absolutely surreal. Set myself a real massive target, and it looks like we're going to be very close. So I can't thank you enough. If you do want to become a member of the channel, the guys and girls in the description, they became, we sponsor things like Domaku, we do the giveaways and whatnot. It really does some help support the channel out. There's a link in there. If you are on iOS, you have to click the link as well. You can't join. They've removed that function off the YouTube app. Um, and if you are brand new, good day. How are we doing? You're right. So what we're talking about is the girls, they got the dub. They uh, put away Gold Coast Suns. In what was the topsy turvy game? 46 16, uh, 30 points. Uh, they did keep uh, Cowton's extra, extra slim hopes of the finals berth alive. Collingwood against Richmond and Doggies versus Brisbane. Should they lose that, Cowton would have to get a huge turnaround. So, percentage probably keeps us out of that. But you never know, dear. It's a funny old game. But. Let's talk about this game. Uh, it was kind of a tale of four different myriads of quarters, really. And Gold Coast, we talked about them in the preview on the AFLW show on Blue Abroad, that they're kind of topsy-turvy themselves. Sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're really poor. They're a real hard side to really nail down. And what the Carlton girls did is they put on a score quite early on. They looked really good, they looked really sharp, particularly people... Um, in that side, like Mimi Hill, she was fantastic in Gab Pound, really giving us some energy off the halfback line. And the ball movement was short and crisp, and they looked to really pressure around the ball. Nicola Stevens took two very well taken goals, and probably two of the best goals you'll see in the women's game. Real skillful little shots at goal. Um, but then as the game went on, what you found was Gold Coast started to put numbers around the ball, put a bit of pressure. There was definitely a weather element involved as well in the second and fourth quarter for them it was a lot easier when you were going that direction of icon to really get the ball moving and you saw players like drennan and whitford uh row bottom they really stood out and really got the game going in their favor it was really just a result defending from Carlton, and uh, a lot of set shots missed by gold coast which were probably gimmies really at times and they did not really get the scoreboard pressure it is a case of one of them things that we talk about a lot of times that sometimes the most important pressure is the scoreboard pressure it kept that gap and count and girls really did enough in the first half to win this game it does ask the question though that the girls went into their shell a little bit when the pressure came and you've got to remember that the last three games they've played sides that are very inexperienced very young and probably don't have the talent of the major four, top four sides, particularly the top four, to a lesser extent, the top six sides. And you saw really the golfing class in the women's competition, which is only going to get be bigger next year as the talent pool thins out and is spread over more sides. The next week's game against Melbourne is a huge ass. They ran up a massive score the week just gone. And... They'll be looking to go into finals, I think, one, as the best team in the comp, but two, that's percentage as well, and two, looking to get a bit of momentum going. There's a lot of inner subplots with this girls' game against Melbourne. You've got Taylor Harris coming back. You've got Darcy versus Taylor in, that, in the goal kicking. You've got a lot of little insular things, and... The problem with Melbourne is they're going to bring the intensity. They get a tick across the board. They have constant pressure. They have good ball movement. They don't let you have time on the ball. And that is what we've started to see. Just a little bit of warning signs that everything's not all peaky and all rosy at Carlton Football Club when that pressure came. When Gold Coast were a little bit rigid, they didn't give Carlton girls it their own way, you found that long kick come back, that kick for territory. And that is kind of a concern that the priority of this football team, structurally, is territory. And for me, I find territory the most pointless stat. It's it, it's a very archaic method. You hear it in Rambo a lot. You used to hear it in rugby a lot. And then as sports science has come in, territory is great. But if you're not doing anything with that territory, 
you are effectively just giving the ball back to the opposition. And Melbourne are that team that if you give the ball back, they like using it. They like punishing you. On this game, though, there was some real little takeouts for Cal and that they'll probably go in with a little bit of, I wouldn't say confidence, but I would say a little bit that, you know, when things go well, it goes very well. Let's talk about some Jess Good for me, probably one of the most underrated players at Cal. And what she allows to do is allow Moody a bit more ability to roam around. You find Good when she's not rucking, she's playing that ruck role around the ground. Then Moody goes off and does her thing. Good this week as well, going up forward, two goals, 10 touches. It really adds a dynamic dynamic that I really like. I like the moody good combination. I think it is a real solid combination. Both of them float in that forward line. Moody, as you saw, she took off a lot, a lot of bounces this game for her individually as well. It really was impressive. I really love Gam Pound's energy as well off halfback. I think it sets us up well and she's going to have to have a big game this week coming against Melbourne. A lot's going to be dependent on her. The big concern for me is when Kez Harrington isn't taking the kick-ins, there's a big pressure there. They get a bit stuck. You see that switch. They want to do the switch, but the switch is no good when it's so slow. All it does is allow the opposition to reset the opposite side you've switched to. Has to be quicker. Has to be direct. And you saw a few times some of the girls got a little bit lost in that and it started to become really arborous, the movement in the back line. And again, that brings pressure. And you saw that Gold Coast reacted to that by playing a higher forward press and really locking Carlton in. A lot of kicking out on the full, a lot of loose kicks down the wing. That is a little area there for me that Carlton just need to sharpen up a little bit with ball movement. I'd love to see Mimi Hill 25 touches. You saw her a few times. Drops really far back to try and give us that impetus and that pace and that energy off halfback. Sometimes it gets real stagnant. I do want to reserve special praise, though, for someone who's fast becoming one of my favourites. Courtney Jones, 13 touches, 4 tackles, 1 goal, 2. Really encompasses that forward role. And for me, I really enjoy what she brings. I enjoy that energy, that tackle pressure. I enjoy the fact that she's looking to make things happen. She's willing to give it off and bring players into the game as well, more, more so importantly. And I think in the off-season, what that says to me is she looks really good when she's working off Moody when Moody's there or good. They're taller girls. What I'd like to see in the off-season is maybe do we have a sniff at someone like Sabrina Fredericks? Do we have a sniff at someone like that? A real tall body in the forward line who can be there and allow Courtney to do her best work. I think she is a second forward for me and I think her movement off there really does allow it. I do think that that off-season is going to be a mini re rebuild and at the end of the season we'll do a video on maybe the suggestions of what we can go into the trade, little things that we can maybe look at. But for me, that's one thing that stands out. Courtney Jones is really phenomenal and a real acquisition and a real positive this year in a real topsy-turvy year. Bit of, bit of love for Darcy. The tried all game, did get the goal, one goal one. Wasn't in about most of the game. I'm really enjoying what Darcy brings. That, that little energy. And when the ball was scrubbed in there, that's where she does her best work. Um, for me, the problem I've got with Darcy is that the ball comes into them real high. And we know that their skill set isn't for that. But when they get the ball low and on the ground, their skill set is real good. And you saw that when it came in there. They get a bit lost. And I think that is the Courtney Jones-Darcy Vessio combination. It's asking for a tall who can bring it down so then they can do their work. Especially Darcy. When that ball hits the deck, they go to work. Bit of a worry about Brooke Walker. She kind of was lost the entire time. And it, it kind of looks like the game's gone past. I just feel like that she doesn't get involved enough. And whether that's ball movement. I think when the ball movement's short and sharp, it looks really good. When he's gone for that kick mark, and our marking is atrocious at the moment. You really see it start to go downhill rapidly. These uncontested marks, they really do struggle and they put themselves under a lot of pressure. And that is kind of it. But outside of that, Abby was good, as, as she always is. Kez had a good game as well. Maddie Gearing brings that little bit of muscle. And Prasparkis, not a usual dynamic game, but did enough for me to suggest that she's a very solid player and she really gets the game going. I want to see a little bit more, though, from these girls. I do feel like under pressure, the bad habits came in and whatnot. But 
It's a big test next week. It'll be interesting to see. But my take, a win's a win. Was it perfect? No. A lot to work on. I think you'll see where these girls are next week when they get brought the attention. Till next time, though. Much love. Palm out.